Hey guys, Gary J here. And today I want to talk to you about how to get the most out of your entry level telescope. This is the entry level telescope. And this is the reflective Newtonian design here, which is a very good telescope. Now the size of this one is a 114 EQ. That 114 means it has a about a four and a half inch mirror in the back here. Light comes into the front, goes to this mirror here. It's a special made mirror, so it reflects light from here all the way up here to your secondary mirror, which reflects light through your eyepiece. Very interesting design. This telescope tube is about three foot long, but it works as if it were six foot long because the light goes down and comes back up. So I love the design of the Newtonian. Now, if you've had one of these telescopes for a long time, this one's about 20 years old at least. And, you know, you keep it in good shape. But uh, you want to improve the quality of your telescope, especially if it's older. Uh, I have some pointers that might be able to help you with that. Now, you may be thinking about, well, I need to go out and buy me a brand new telescope because I've had this one for a long time. Well, you can still get a lot more out of this telescope if you want to and save yourself a lot of money sometime. So here's some tidbits that might help you in making this telescope a lot better, uh, especially now. All right, number one, what I would do, and a few days ago I did, I took the mirror out of the back of this telescope and there's a, a, a technique for taking that out. It's not difficult at all. And I cleaned that mirror. And there's a specific way, a special way you have to clean that mirror. You cannot scrub it, rub it, put harsh solvents on it. It's not like a mirror on the wall. But there's a way to do that. So it's a very delicate process of cleaning that mirror. So I got all the dust off of this mirror. Went to the old school using a little bit of soap and water. It's like one part soap and a hundred parts water. Okay, guys, we put our mirror back on here and these little clamps right here. Um, you want to make sure that you don't tighten these down too tight. And it uh, looks really good now. So that's one of the things that you want to do is clean that mirror really well so it reflects light. And then... The secondary mirror, it has to focus. That's a parabolic type mirror. It has to focus the light to a point to the secondary mirror up here. And with the secondary mirror up here, you have to collimate your two mirrors. That means you have to calibrate them so that this mirror is pointing directly to this small mirror up here. So you get the best view and picture through your eyepiece. If it's not calibrated or calibrated correctly, you're going to get stars that look like a smudge and planets will look like a smudge. So that's imperative that you have to calibrate it. There's a very simple process to calibrating these two. It's not difficult. Okay, so clean the mirror, number one. Collimate it, which means line the mirrors up perfectly. That's the second thing. And the third thing was, while you have that mirror off, take a damp cloth and wipe out this tube on the inside so the dust doesn't fall down back on the mirror. Okay, and always keep your dust cap on here and keep uh, an old eyepiece or something inside here so that dust doesn't go in here to get down to your mirror down there. So that's one big thing that now, a third thing or fourth thing is that you can replace your finder scope. This is a cheap plastic finder scope right here. And the lenses are plastic and it just doesn't look very good like a glass one would. I have a brand new finder scope that I'm gonna put on here and it's a, a red dot type finder scope. You could put that on a gun. It's such a nice metal red dot finder scope and they're easy to adjust. If you're looking at the stars or galaxies or planets, nebulas, and you line your scope up, the crosshairs on your scope on the object or target, and you look through your telescope eyepiece and you can't find it, it is really, really aggravating. So if you don't want that kind of aggravation and your scope here is not staying where you want it, 
then you're gonna you need to replace it. Finder scopes go from about twenty dollars to several hundred dollars. The one that I'm replacing this with, the red dot uh, scope, cost about sixty dollars altogether with the bracket. I have to use a different bracket for it uh, to hold it, but. It'll make a world of difference when you're looking at galaxies and planets and so forth when you want to line up your scope here. So, I mean, that's number four. Number five is the biggie. Number five is really most important to make this a real functional telescope, better than ever before. Because on this telescope, this is a, a 0 0.965 eyepiece. And this, these are generally marked at, with a K. This one has a K on it, which means Keller. There's another one like this that has an H on it, which means hydrogen. It's kind of a German name. Probably mispronounced that. But if it has a K or H on it, it is the worst and the least of all eyepieces. And what happens when you buy a telescope, an entry-level telescope, they throw in these eyepieces like this. And these are really terrible eyepieces, but they're there just to get you started. That's all they're there for. And so you need to upgrade. If you really want your telescope to work to its full potential, you're going to have to replace these eyepieces if they have a K or a H on them especially, because they only have like two elements, two lenses in here. You need to go to a Plossel. A Plossel has like four elements, four. Uh, they're a lot better they're 10 times better than these right here. And I'll show you those. So when you think about your telescope, the telescope body tube itself does not magnify anything. All this does is capture light, reflects it up here to the eyepiece. It is your eyepiece right here that magnifies. So the optics in this need to be really good. This is like those $2 reading glasses you get at Walmart, okay? These things, you can buy them on eBay, like three of them for $20. They're super cheap, and the quality is not that good. You can see the rings of Saturn with this, uh, but it's hard to do, and the quality is not that great on the picture. So, uh, and you want something much, much better. So this is really the, the heart of the telescope right here is to get a good eyepiece. And I'll show you um, the plossels that I use to do that. Okay. Now, what I bought a long time ago was this kit right here. This is Celestron. If you buy a kit, they make them look like this right here. Make sure you get one that has a name brand on it. Celestron, Mead, or Nexstar, or something. Don't get one that doesn't have a brand on it. And this is a nice little box here. Now, this kit right here costs today about $200, $220, and it's well worth every penny of it. This is going to make your telescope come alive, okay? Now, in this kit right here, uh, it comes with five eyepieces, a 32 millimeter, 17, 13, 8, and 6 millimeter. It comes with a 2X Barlow, uh, and... Also, it comes with an adapter. And this adapter is made for that small eyepiece, the 0.965. And then you put in your 1.25 eyepiece in here. So that's it. this is the adapter. Now, the problem with this particular telescope, and probably most of them, is that if you use the adapter, it, and you put your eyepiece in here, one of these in here, the problem is, is that it pushes the eyepiece up too high. So when you're trying to focus on something, you turn the the um, barrel all the way down, and then you you realize you need to turn it down about this much more to get it truly in focus, but you can't do that because this raises it up. So that's the problem with these right here. It's not bad with a 32, but when you get into 17 and some of the higher power eyepieces, you're not going to be able to do that, so you can't use the rest of these eyepieces, okay? So how do you get around that? And I'll show you how to get around that in just a moment. So 
when you're you're looking at these uh, eyepieces like the the Keller here, and you see how the Keller looks right here. The Keller is very small. Now this is a 32. We'll set that right there. Now which one would you rather look through? Would you rather look through the Keller or one like this, this Plossel? Okay, everything about the Plossel here, look at the lens here. The lens here is incredibly big. So this is really huge compared to the Keller. Okay. The 21 millimeter. And this is a 32. You might expect that to be bigger. So, this is a 17 right here. So, this is much smaller than, this is a higher power right here, 17. But look at the difference right here. The lens here is much bigger, it's 17 uh, millimeter, a higher power than this uh, 21. And so this is a, a very nice uh, plossel here. These have like four elements, four lenses in there, and these have like two. And these lenses are made of plastic, and these are made of glass. So they're superior in that way. So that's the ones you want to use, okay? And with our Barlow 2X right here, this will unscrew right here, this barrel part right here, and you can screw this onto your eyepiece, and it'll be like 1.5 magnification on the Barlow lens, which that's a 2X. You don't use 3, 4, and 5X Barlows on eyepieces like this for a telescope like that. Uh, they just don't work. So you can see the difference in quality there. So now the question is, well, if my telescope is set up to hold this right here, uh, that barrel cap, then how am I going to put a, a one and a quarter inch eyepiece in there? It won't fit. That's true. But there's a, a solution to that. Okay, looking at our adjustment here, and you see this cap right here, it holds the... Um, 0.965 eyepiece right here. But you're not going to get the uh, the one and a quarter inch here in there. It's just not going to work. Okay. So that's the problem. And that's, you know, how do you do that? And that adapter is not going to work either because it makes your lens stand up too tall and you can't get it far enough in to get it focused on the one and a quarter inch. This is something a lot of people don't know. On these kind of telescopes, you can turn this cap right here and take that off, okay? So that's your point one twenty five, And now you buy another cap, and this is a lot bigger. This is the 1.25, you see. So now you just screw this on to take the place of the other one. And you can see the difference in size here. So now you can put your 1.25 eyepiece in here with no problem, okay? Okay. So that goes all the way in. Now your telescope is set up to hold the 1.25, which is a lot big, bigger, a lot easier to look through this than that little, a uh, smaller eyepiece. And this is going to just change your whole view and perspective here with your telescope, okay? So what have we done with this telescope, basically? We cleaned the mirror in the back of it, took that out, cleaned that delicately, cleaned out the tube here on the telescope, we're going to replace the finder scope so we have a much better finder scope. And we replaced the cap right here to accommodate this 1.25 inch instead of the 0.965 eyepiece. And this is a lot better optics right here. This is like prescription glass compared to what was in the, uh, in the smaller eyepieces right here. Okay, 
That's going to be a tremendous help right there. You're just going to have a whole new, brand new telescope doing that. Okay, guys, let's put a different finder scope on here. One that's a lot better than this right here. Okay, guys, I took the scope out of here. I've undone these two screws right here, and these are just like cheap metal screws. And you see how they just screw in there. So, um, that's where we at with that. Now, I know that I'm gonna have to drill another hole in here, okay? If you have a finder scope on your telescope and you have a problem keeping that thing zeroed in with your uh, eyepiece, it's a real headache. So we're just upgrading this telescope. Now what I have here is a really nice uh, reflex sight. And this is by, and it comes in a really nice box here. And this is by a company Astromania. Here's some instructions, a couple of different Allen wrenches with it. And it cost about $39, which is pretty reasonable for this right here. And this is the, uh, the stand right here, uh, which is skeletonized, as you can see. And being skeletonized, it makes it lighter and it's made out of aluminum. So it's good material. But this is the, the bad boy we want right here too. And this is going to be the um, scope that we're going to be using. So this is a red dot and green dot scope. I want to show you one other thing too. I had to order this separate, which that's all included in the price total of about $60, which is not bad. This is the base plate right here. And the base plate right here um, is what holds this. That Y part goes down on the base plate and you turn these screws to hold that in place and you can take your finder scope off too when you're transporting and this edge right here sticks out and so you have allen screws here uh, where you open this up and you just slide it on here like that and then tighten it down okay so that works really well right there now looking at the scope it's got a rubber cover which is nice to have this lens right here is really nice looking and you have like four different um reticles here uh, one is like a crosshair one is a round circle with a point in the middle and the other one is kind of like uh, a crosshair with a circle around it and then you have a small dot so you can turn it any color you want to on that. Okay, maybe you can see that. So that's one particular reticle there. As long as that red dot is on it, doesn't matter where it's at in the screen, your telescope should be set perfectly on it when you look through the eyepiece, once you get this adjusted. And then the green. To me, green picks up a whole lot better than red. And that's just one of the reticles there. Okay, now she's in place and time to zero her in. That looks pretty good up there, doesn't it? Okay, this is Jupiter, and it looks like right above it is uh, one of the moons, and then you got a second moon above that one, that little white spot. And then down low on the screen, you see the uh, uh, third moon. I don't see the fourth one. Okay, this is Venus, and notice it has like a one-third phase here, full, so. It's a lot like uh, the moon. The moon's not far from that either.